What's up, Yoon fam? It is I, Mark Yoon. Welcome to Vocal Library Volume 6, the series where I go through the library and encyclopedia of Soul Calibur 6 with screenshots provided by Matt Said That or SolarFlare95 and requested by Sophie and Lamar. In this series, we just read vocally the stuff that is found in the library and encyclopedia that you need to unlock through different various gameplay modules. And uh, doing so, we can go over it together so you don't have to worry about hunting it down or trying to unlock it or just staring at a blank screen and reading because we know that that's not what gaming is about, right? Well, if you want to accept the lore and you want to understand more about the universe of Soul Calibur 6 without having to go do these things yourself, well, that's why I have this series. So without further ado, we're going to jump into the first lore piece, which is noted as the White Giant. A mysterious character and the subject of many rumors in the New World. According to those who know him, he is a giant with pale skin who lives in harmony with nature. For a number of years, he has apparently been rising, raising an orphan, but those who claim to have seen the White Giant have not interacted with him. So the very veracity of their claims is questionable. Despite being called a giant, he is only comparably tall to the people living in his area. His quote-unquote pale skin hints that he may be of European origin. The latest tales of his exploits say that he has left the New World and traveled to Europe. Recently, a quote-unquote beast-headed barbarian was sighted in multiple locations across Europe. This strange figure wielded a battle axe that resembles that used by that of the White Giant, which hints that these two figures are one and the same. Of course, it is conceivable that the White Giant may have taken to the seas once more and returned to the shores of his homeland. Clearly, that is in reference to Rock. And moving on, we have the power of resurrection. The cursed sword whispered to the young Siegfried, Gather souls, thousands, millions of them, more, ever more. If you can restore my power, returning your further to li- father to life will be more than just a dream. The power to avenge his father's death and restore him to life? To any person in their right mind, the sweet temptations of the cursed sword spoke to the troubled Siegfried would sound insane. But Siegfried took up his dark blade and became Nightmare, using the sword to slaughter and wreak havoc. Not many know the infamous knight's arm was to resurrect his father. But questionably, noble intentions or not, the tragedies he wrought would have earned him a place among history's most despised figures. For all of human history, in every age and culture, man has dreamed of taming death itself. Dark magic and necromancy, myths of heroes escaping their underworld prisons, and ancient secrets of eternal life. When someone close to you passes away, thoughts of your own death are inevitable. The sense of one's fleeting existence leads to questions about what lies beyond one's dying breath. So it's only human to seek a way to conquer mortality and reclaim the soul of loved one from the clutches of death. The people of the wind deity. The people in this village in Southeast Asia still worship the wind, having resisted the spread of Western culture, science, and values. The village itself was built in a mountainous region next to the sea, and it's replete with windmills with a breathtaking pastoral beauty. Their existence remains reminds the villagers that the wind is always close. The people of the wind deity's tradition center around priestesses of the wind who have the ability to read the movements of the air. One of these priestesses' primarily purpose is to remind the people of the breeze's blessings. The villagers believe the winds travel the world, always making sure to stop their homeland to spin its windmills. Hokoji Temple A large statue of Buddha that reaches over 24 meters in height is hidden beneath the temple in Kyoto. At its center is a geomantric compass, which is said to have been used by the mystics to prevent Toyotomi Hideyoshi's unification of Japan. The warlord was said to have cut down a Jomon cedar tree that was over a thousand years old from Yakushima Island to use as the main support post for the giant statue. In addition, it is also believed to contain iron that was melted down from swords that were used in bloody battles across the land. In Japan, it is believed that trees contained Kodama, or spirit, and contain a divine life force worthy of veneration. With the giant Buddha being made the murdered, with the murdered body of such a sublime natural being, i.e. an old Jomon tree, 
and infused with iron that had tasted blood, it is no wonder the negative energy in the ground eventually brought forth a great calamity. The Manji Clan A ninja clan said to have lived at the base of Mount Fuji. It is said that they had harnessed the power of language and can use it to control people's hearts and minds. Beholden to none, the Manji Clan lived hidden deep within the forests of Fuji. Some say to protect the treasure of old, while others say it was none could discover the secrets behind their powerful ninja techniques. Whatever the reason, the clan distanced themselves from other ninja and dared to maintain neutrality with the violent upheavals that shook Japan. However, one powerful warlord, Oda Nobunaga, developed a fateful interest in uncovering the clan's secrets. Since the dawn of civilization, information has been priceless. An important piece of knowledge could change the tide of battle. Nobunaga perhaps believed that if he knew the secret techniques of the Manji clan, he would be able to get anybody to tell him anything, clearing his path to becoming Japan's one true ruler. Another theory suggests that Nobunaga wanted to get his hands on the clan's unique foreign techniques. Manji swords were said to resonate with the spiritual power. If one should fall into enemy hands, it would give them great power and cause the aspiring lord untold trouble. The clan continually refused Nobunaga's requests for an alliance. Ultimately, he ordered them all to be slaughtered, his justification being that if he couldn't get his hands on the clan's knowledge or weaponry, then no one should. His reputation as a terrifying demon of a man is indeed well deserved. Thank you for listening and watching Volume 6 of The Vocal Library. Of course, we do daily videos, but every Thursday is The Vocal Library Day, so if you like this series, then please subscribe, and every Thursday uh, it will be there for you when you wake up. Uh, I post these videos at midnight, so you will always have it in the morning time. And um, you can also ask me some questions or talk about whatever you want in the comment section down below or on my Discord, which link is in the description box down below. I want to thank you guys all again for watching and listening. And as always, I love it. Thank you. And thank you.